Okay? Yes. So, okay. Um, the author is um, Kelly Williams Brown, and she is the New York Times bestseller. Okay? So right. my name's Amy Newell, if you didn't know already, and I work at Ren Lake. I'm the administrative assistant to the president and an HR generalist. Um, I have a bachelor's degree from uh, SIUC back in 1996. So I've been an adult for a while. Um, I am a mother to three kids, uh, 2017 and 13. So um, I've been watching them progressively get into the adulthood. Um, so what makes me an expert to present adulting? Nothing really makes me an expert except for I'm older. Um, but I have been where you've been in the past, and um, I have been there, and I'm also cheering my children on to embrace and struggle and succeed with adulting. So I guess my message is when uh, you are uh, taking on more adult roles, you're going to have struggles, and you're going to have successes, and sometimes you're going to have to try it several times. And then sometimes, you know, there'll be things that that uh, you'll embrace and grow with, and there'll be some things that you just want to do it, get it done with, and hopefully not have to tackle that again. Mm -hmm. So if you um, are interested in this book after we review it, um, it can be bought on Amazon Prime or probably any of your local coffee shop, but um, it is available on, in paperback for $9.49 as of the other day. Um, and that's a lot of steps. Um, today we're just going to be covering a couple chapters, and then our second uh, meeting will cover the second part of the book. So sit back and take notes. Um, we're going to go through them really quickly. Uh, pick a few to tackle between now and the next time we meet. Um, don't pick to tackle them all at once. Becoming an adult doesn't just poof happen in one day. So take baby steps. And once you attempt to step and feel good about it, you know, go onward and upward about, with it. And if you feel like you don't, if you don't feel, sorry, there's a typo there. If you don't feel like you succeed a step, that's okay. You can always try it again. Um, I don't know very many expert adults out there, so um, we all have our trials. So we'll go ahead and dive in. And the first chapter is about getting your mind right. You know, you need to accept as an adult that you're not special. We've been told by our parents how special we are. Um, but one thing that happens when we're adult is we're told we're not <laughs> special. We're just like everybody else. We're on the same plane. Step three, don't get hurt when the world doesn't care about you um, and that the world doesn't revolve around you. Step four, it's nearly always easier to adjust your expectations than it is to change the world. Your comfort and well-being is up to you. So don't get hung up on if things aren't right in the world, um, just accept them and move them, move on. Um, number five, accept that right now you are small time. Um, right now, a lot of you are getting your education and um, you're gonna be going into bigger and better things. But for right now, um, you are small time. Um, set reasonable goals for yourself. Step seven, stop enjoying things. Um, ironically, just enjoy them. Uh, step eight, avoid shame boomerangs. Uh, step nine, remember your circle of concern versus your circle of action. And in these chapters, they talk more about each step. Um, so we can, you can learn more about each step. Um, step 10, begin to separate in your mind things that are valid long-term plans versus a not valid long-term plan and be okay with being alone. A lot of times you, when you go through these steps of adulthood, you do feel alone and that's scary to feel alone, but you need to be okay with that. Um, and when I say be alone, it means maybe the first time you have to go to the library. You know, you can't always have your best friend go with you to the library because you have to do a special project, say, on campus. So be okay with being alone and taking steps by yourself. 
Um, step 12, recognize six month problems um, and distinguish between horses and zebras. Step 14, your brain is very important. So take care of it. And when it's sick or just not doing well, find someone who can help it out. So your brain is very important. And we go through all these emotions um, and changes and um, your brain and your consciousness talks to you. And sometimes the message that you talk to yourself isn't always positive. So you wanna take care of yourself. Um, and if a lot of those are negative comments and you just aren't doing well, you do need to reach out to someone who can help you, either be a teacher or a counselor or another adult figure, because believe it or not, we've all been there um, struggling with our insecurities, what we want to do. And at Red Lake, we have career services that can help you with that. Um, step 15, pay attention to natural consequences and learn to anticipate them. So that's a lot about just being prepared. Number 16, remember that for better or for worse, you are in control of your physical self and surroundings. So try not to make bad choices and keep yourself healthy and safe. And step 17, when necessary, look at yourself in the mirror and give yourself some real talk. So sometimes uh, we need to hear things, um, that we know is true, but we don't want to accept them as true. So every once in a while you need to look at yourself and be like, okay, I'm not in a happy place. And you can also give yourself some real talk in a positive term. You no, know, it's going to be hard, but other people have done it and I'm going to do it too. Um, step 18, um, when something bad happens to you, don't rush immediately to figure out why it wasn't your fault. You know, analyze the situation, see what you could have done differently. Step 19, get used to giving more than what you get. Um, people will let you down, situations will let you down. But if you give it your all, then that's really all that you can do for yourself. Okay, so that is covering getting your, your mind right. Because once you get your mind right, all the situations and circumstances that you're put in, it will help you handle step two, domesticality. Um, so one, a couple, just a little side note, um, a couple of these steps are uh, kind of appropriate for what we're going through right now with um, some of um, the COVID situation. I had to chuckle when they said step 20, buy toilet paper in bulk. Okay, step 20 to 21, um, find the right place for you. So whether that be where you're living or you're going to school, but uh, the group of friends that you're even uh, hanging with, find the right planet. So this is more surrounding where you're living um, and being domestic. So if you are renting, um, be a good tenant, be responsible to your landlord. Learn how to patch a nail hole. Step 24, if you need to match paint, chip off a paint sample. You're gonna save yourself a lot of time and frustration. Um, step 25, find furniture on the cheap. So a lot of you are college students and there's a lot of resale shops. Don't go out and um, to a furniture store and have to take out a loan for furniture. There's plenty of people, friends and family, if you put the word out there, they have furniture that's sitting in their basement or garage that they're more than willing to get rid of. Um, step 26, put things up in frames, not posters. Posters were for when you were a kid in your room and frames show more, you be more of an adult. So step 27, you can be poor and still have a really cute apartment. Um, there's a lot of thrift stores, like I said before, um, and you can do your own artwork, go to Hobby Lobby or Art and Craft Place and paint a big um, framed uh, picture and put it on the wall. You don't have to go um, to Barnes and Noble and um, look up a bunch of books on home decor and then go to Pottery Barn. Um, to uh, uh, design your apartment. 
Um, let's see, step 28, get a nice actual bed. The best investment that you can get is a nice bed with a nice mattress. You spend, you know, one fourth of your day, if not more, um, in your bed. So you need your rest. Um, step 29, create a correspondence drawer. So have a drawer in your house where you have stationery or thank you cards or um, nice paper for resumes because you will be doing a lot of correspondence. Um, for thank you notes for graduating, uh, thank you notes when um, you want to send a thank you note maybe for uh, a professor that's gone above and beyond or a friend. Step 30, lean into storage solutions. So you're going to want to learn a little bit about storage solutions because you're going to start accumulating stuff. Step 31, buy tools. Five should be sufficient for now. They also have little toolkits that you can get. They even make them pink for girls if that's what you would like to buy. Um, step 32, get a step stool and use it to check your smoke detector. Uh, rule of thumb is when the time change, get some new batteries and change the smoke detector batteries. Step 33, make two copies of your keys then your apartment. So a lot of these steps are really common sense, but there are a lot of steps that you don't really think of until you're in that situation. So I hope it's not too redundant, but how many times have you been locked out of a house or a car? I know it happens to a lot of people. Step 34, if you're really terrible at cleaning, it may be worth to hire a cleaner and ask if they can tutor you why they clean. That was supposed to be funny. Okay, on to domesticality. Step 35, do some cleaning every day. It'll make you feel good, um, if not anything, and cleanliness is best. So step 36, habit of mindlessly tidying. So if you get in the habit of when you're on the phone, talking to a friend, walking through the kitchen and just um, putting your dishes in the dishwasher, it doesn't seem as much as a task. Um, step 38, do not leave to crust for tomorrow what may be wiped up for today. So what that means is if you have a mess, a crusty countertop, it's going to be a lot easier to clean it before it crusts over. And it'll take a lot less energy to pick up after yourself now than instead of just cleaning up today. Step 39, be mindful of your garbage. Don't let it overflow. Step 40, get a toilet plunger. That's enough set on its own. Uh, step 41, and a toothbrush. If you don't brush your teeth, you're going to be spending a lot more time um, at your dentist office, which will be more costly. Uh, step 42, master other basic toilet repairs. Step 43, when cleaning, first do a garbage and recycling sweep. Step 44, tackle glass, mirrors, and windows. Step 45, sweep slowly and think about vacuuming if you have a pet. Step 46, master bathroom cleaning. Step 47, find a tub cleaner that works for you. Step 48, ever so often bleach your sink, tub, and toilet, which that is very uh, uh, important these days with the COVID virus. Um, step 49, do at least a little spring cleaning every year. Step 50, master advanced cleaning. So once you get the basics, um, then you can start going to Pinterest and looking up how to get stains or whiten your brights or brighten your whites. Um, so master advanced cleaning. Step 51, do not keep things in your house that make you feel sad or bad. So purging items that we'd rather forget, get those out of your house. If it is a book that you read um, that brings in bad memories, um, you know, donate that book to your local thrift store and uh, move it out. If there is um, an item that is in your room that makes you feel sad every time you see it, it will cause you um, possibly anxiety. So step 52, go a step further and don't allow things in your house that you do not love. 
So you want to surround yourself with nice and happy items. Step 53, think about strategies other than keeping every single item that may have a scrap of sentiment attached to it. So if you keep everything that you have attachment to, um, you're going to end up being a pack rat. So you're really going to have to fine tune what items you take with you um, as you move to apartment, apartment, um, move out of your home. Um, step 54, replace things when they become disgusting. So um, if something breaks, get a new one. If your sheets have holes in them, buy some new sheets. So replace things when they need to be replaced. It's pretty much, a lot of this is common sense. Step 55, get a big five subject notebook. One with pockets to hold pieces of paper and one large enough to hold back the tide of moving insanity. So it's a good thing to have a notebook to keep all your papers organized. Step 56, give a bunch of stuff away. Um, it makes you feel good. Sometimes you can get a tax write-off um, for it if you take it to a Goodwill store. Um, step 57, get some decent boxes. Go to your Walmart or your dollar store and you can actually get decent boxes to keep, um, you know, craft supplies in. If you have a collection of items, um, you can put your collection in those um, boxes and store them away. Christmas decorations, what have you. Step 58, things that live in the same room can and should go in boxes together. So you don't want to put something like a can opener in the kitchen in a box with, say, your stamps that should be in your office area or at your desk. So make sure that the boxes are relevant to the items inside. Wrap fragile items thoroughly. Um, step 50, or I'm sorry, step 60. If an item holds something in your apartment, it should hold something during the move. So if you have a box and it's holding something in, you know, where you live and you have to move, make sure that that box would be strong enough to move it. Step 61, if a larger item needs a smaller item to function, take them to each other. So, um, you know, if you were going to move, uh, you might want to tape all of the remote controls and then actually attach them to the TV. So um, they're together. That's an example. 62, soft things go in big garbage bags. And to finish up the last four steps of domesticality, uh, step 63, precious things that could be ruined by water get wrapped in plastic and put in big plastic bins. Step 64, if your friends help you move, you owe them pizza and a beverage. And step 65, if you can leave because it will eventually be over. Um, hiring movers is a great option if you can afford it because um, they don't have to move all of your things. They could just move like your couches, your refrigerators, your washer and dryers, big items, and then you can move the small boxes. It's very cost effective and it'll save your back and um, be a lot easier if you have, be easier to get friends to help you move if you tell them all the heavy stuff is going to be taken care of by movers. So next, after we've become a little bit domestic, um, we will start conquering cooking. So, um, and some of you may not cook at all because you're still living at home or you're planning to move to the dorms where you have somebody that cooks all your meals. So this may be something um, from a college standpoint that you may not have to conquer right away. Um, so we'll start with step 67, find an apartment you can cook in at least a little bit. Step 68, start to put your together your kitchen. Step 69, get you some plates, bowls, and so on. Step 70, get the most basic implements. So it'd be like a can opener, spoons, forks, knives, ladles. Um, step 71, if you have the cash, kitchen items that make life easier. So um, some of those items might be um, like uh, an electric, um, an electric uh, mixer. So that would be make your life a lot easier. 
Step 72, get some baking supplies. Step 73, get the basic appliances, microwave, stove, refrigerator. Step seven, necessary. The best thing that you can do for yourself when it comes to cooking is to always put the ladles in the drawer with the ladles. Always put um, the uh, Ziploc bags um, where you always put the Ziploc bags so you don't have to do um, you know, a scavenger hunt every time you wanna cook something. So always find a place for everything and keep it there. Um, step 75, if, you, if your produce or meat is constantly going bad, freeze it or even buy it pre-frozen. So um, freezing your, your food can extend its life. And if you just put it in the refrigerator every time, it could go sour. Step 76, get, it, get in the zone why grocery shopping. It actually says shipping, I'm sorry. So when you go to the grocery store, you need to have a list and what you need to buy and you need to check that list before you actually go to the checkout counter. Okay, um, cooking 77. Uh, have a slated grocery shopping time that includes prep time built in afterwards. So after you go grocery shopping, a lot of people don't realize it, but sometimes when you go grocery shopping, you have to come home and put stuff away and some things you may want to cut up and store it. Um, some things you may um, want to separate and bag it and freeze it. So always include time afterwards, after you get done um, grocery shopping, to do some prep time with the food and products that you bought. Step 78, do put produce in the crisper drawer. Um, it's designed to hold produce and so you'll definitely want to utilize that. Step 79, store and freeze things properly. And again, you can go to Pinterest for all kinds of tips for that. Step 80, until you are a good cook, follow recipes. Step 81, buy the book, Joys of Cooking. Step 82, there's also another book. It's called Plus, How to Cook Everything by Mark Bittman. Step 83, and maybe some other cookbooks too. Step 84, figure out how to make the breakfast that you like. Step 85, master oatmeal. Step 86, maybe have some smoothie stuff on hand. Step 87, learn how to make soup. Soup can last several meals if you make it um, in large enough quantities. You can also freeze it. Um, so making soup is a great survival in the kitchen and feeding yourself. Step 88, make good sandwiches. Step 89, master the art of the meal salad, where you can mix a lettuce salad together, um, and then add items to it to make a meal. Cooking, step 90, make non-bullshit potatoes. That wasn't my word. <laughs> but anyway, make potatoes. Um, step 91, marinate your meat. Step 92, step 93, make a decent steak. Uh, step 94, get an Instapot that also works as a slow cooker. I don't have any experience with an Instapot, but um, I do with a slow cooker and I use it and have used it for years and they are great for time management. Step 95, go out on a limb and throw a dinner party. Step 96, make a dope cheese plate. So cut up different cheeses, put some grapes and crackers on there. Step 97, do not fear the puff pastry. Step 98, have some snacks and non-alcoholic beverages on hand for when company comes. Step 99, hand wash dishes properly. So that's really important. All these things here, you can go to um, YouTube or like I said, Pinterest, and that can help you um, with cooking. And there's all kinds of recipe um, websites out there as well. So our next chapter is fake it till you make it. Um, step 100, remember that, the out, remember that the outside world, there's an outside world out there that you're going to uh, be in all the time. Step 101, watch your mouth. Uh, step number two, be aware of local, national, and work events. Step 103, 
Spend 10 minutes a day gathering news, at least. Step 104, develop your own opinions. Step 105, read opinions from people who disagree with you. So um, step 106, get to know people with different political opinions and do not convince them the center, do not make convincing them your opinion the center of the relationship and do work to make the world as you think it should be. So especially like in social media, a lot of people are sharing their opinions about current events that are going on and that's fine. Um, but it seems like so much lately, um, people are really button heads with how they think. And I think it's very wise um, to develop your own opinions. I think it's very wise to read opinions that aren't normally what you would think, just to have an open mind. Um, but don't try to change people's opinions because they are, I mean, that's one of the most uh, personal and sacred things is your belief system. So you're not going to change people's belief system. Um, you just need to respect it and respect that your beliefs and opinions are going to be different. And I think that will make you fake it until you make it. Um, that is a great uh, policy to adopt in your, um, in your life. Um, one, step 108, look around at the current framework and see who it is that's doing the work you would like to do. So that goes around to shadowing, job shadowing, and um, maybe finding a mentor where you work or go to school. Step 109, feel free to call your elected officials, but be polite, even if you don't feel like being polite. Um, we're in a democratic society, and I would always urge people that if they have a very strong opinion, definitely either in support or not in support. Um, our politicians and elected officials, they don't know unless we talk to them um, what your opinion is on a certain matter. Step 110, perhaps even think about running for office. And that doesn't mean you have to run for mayor. You can run for the trustee at Ren Lake College. You can run for a president of, of a local club. Step 111, revise your perception of partying. Step 112, do not RSVP maybe. Make a commitment to attend something or not attend something. Step 113, err on the side of attending events if maybe you don't really feel like it. As an adult, there are many things that you will do that you will not want to participate in. Um, but there are times when you need to attend events, even if you don't want to. Step 114, learn how to make an appearance and then bounce. So sometimes there may be a party or a gathering or a function that you really need to go to. It doesn't mean that you need to be there at the very beginning of the event and stay till um, the very last person leaves. But it should be um, a respectable amount of time um, to make an appearance and then graciously leave. Step 115, do not be intimidated by glamorous people. Um, glamorous people, I mean, that's all in your own perspective, but everybody puts their uh, pants on one foot at a time or one leg at a time. Um, so don't be intimidated by people. Um, most people, if they knew you were intimidated by them, they would um, be embarrassed by it. Um, nobody wants to come off as intimidating. Okay, step 116, act like you've been there before. Step 117, if you show up at a party and don't know anyone, don't flip out. Take that opportunity to network, take that opportunity to um, have a new experience and meet new people. Step 118, if you forget someone's name, try to trick them into saying it. Step 119, listen more than you talk. You can learn a lot by listening. Um, step 120, ask good questions that take the speaker's answers into account. Step 121, do not talk about your deep, passionate, held beliefs, um, especially when you're first meeting someone. Um, as you get to know people, and it seems like people are open to hearing your passionately held beliefs, um, and there's a safety and security in that, then feel free to. But on the first meeting of someone, um, 
you know, you just kind of want to keep it casual. Step 122, curb your instinct to comment on other people's bodies out loud. You know, we don't need to really, it's just not polite to talk about people's bodies. It makes people feel insecure. Um, whether even if you're giving them a compliment, um, it can make them feel insecure and self-conscious. Um, step 123, don't comment on things people are. Um, comment on, pe on things people do. So, um, you know, you can comment on, um, hey, they do a great job instead of those people think they're know-it-all. Um, so make sure you comment on things that people do. Um, step 124, be polite to trans people. Step 125, pronouns are important. Step 126, do not ask people about their private areas unless you are on the face-to-face -face basis with them, the genitals, not the person. <laughs> Step 127, no need to mentally fill in tragic backstory details. Step 128, don't emotionally rubberneck. Step 129, quit talking about your own body. Step 130, don't tell people you've just met about your problems. Um, problems are a heavy subject and you can really weigh people down with your problems. Um, get to know people more and as you get to know people and people get to know you, they'll see what you struggle with um, and they may be able to, uh, you know, help you out. But if you come off talking about your troubles all the time, the first thing that people might think is that you want something from them. Um, step 131, if a stranger tells you something inappropriately intimate, be sympathetic and graceful. So if somebody comes on to you and they are telling you their problems, try to be sympathetic and graceful about that situation. Step 132, rescue a conversation from the brink of disaster. So if you're talking with someone and they're just going out on the right field, change the subject. Step 134, use the sandwich method when saying things people may be upset or hurt by. Step 135, other people's sex lives are none of your business. Step 136, be interesting. Everybody has something interesting about themselves um, to share. Something unique, I bet you if um, everybody shared four items and one thing is not true, um, that people would be really shocked or share like three things that you've done and then um, guess what it is that you have done. I think people would find you very interesting. Um, step 137, know how to wrap things up. So if you're, that means if you're um, talking to someone and you're overstaying your welcome. So make sure that you don't linger too long. Know how to wrap things up. Step 138, Send a thank you note. That is so important. People like to be appreciated and sending a, you a th sending a thank you note can do a world of difference for you. It can build loyalty and people just know that when they've gone above and beyond for you that you appreciate that. Step 139, determine what you care about then dedicate some of your time to it. So if you are very passionate about feeding the homeless, you know, maybe you could go and donate some of your time to a local food shelter or food um, bank so, or donate uh, food to that food bank. Step 140, imagine rude people as jellyfish. Step 141, develop your own Teflon qualities. So let some things bounce off of you that normally would bother you. Step 142, accept that some people are just jerks. Step 143, try to pity them a little for your own serenity. Step 144, it's probably not about you. Um, this is a conversation that I have a lot um, with people where they will have a scenario and they'll go back through that scenario and think, why were they mean to me? Well, they probably weren't being mean to you. It was probably that they had already had a bad day and you were right there and they took it out on you. It's not usually about you. It's usually about them. So try not to take things so personally, but I know that is really hard and a very challenging thing for a lot of people. 
Step 45, just accept that some people won't like you and never will. And really, that's okay. Um, step 146, do not engage with unhinged people. Uh, 147, accept in the deepest part of your heart that just because you're right or you have the upper moral hand does not mean that you're going to win. Um, step 148, know when to drop the banana. 149, do not allow yourself to be abused. That is such an important thing. And abuse, you know, can be physical and it can be also mental and it can also be um, being taken advantage of. Um, so make sure that, um, that, you, that you protect yourself from being abused. Step 150, uh, give up your seat to, a to someone who's pregnant, an elderly person, or others with obvious physical burdens. Step 151, speak patiently and kindly to people. Step 152, remember that you can catch, catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. And um, to wrap up, fake it till you make it. Step 153, deal with line cutters and their like as though they are sweet, but dim people who need some gentle correction. Step 154, in general, don't cause a ruckus in public. Step 155, do not call people out on the internet. And that, we kind of talked about that with social media. Um, it's just not really the time or place, and it seems like it is becoming more and more of the norm, unfortunately. Step 156, instead, when appropriate, call them. And step 57, whether you agree or you don't agree with someone, just wish them well. Okay, so on to our second to last chapter is get a job. So these are going to be rules and guides um, for when you get a job and what to do after you get a job. Step 57, don't talk about how great this job will be for you in an interview. Talk about how great you are for the job. Step 176, don't badmouth any past employers. Big no-no. Do not badmouth any current employers. Step 177, don't forget to ask questions in an interview. Step 178, negotiate your salary. 179, some industries require internship. If so, go and get yourself one. Step 180, be prepared to do the worst, dullest assignments as an intern or new hire and do them cheerfully. Sometimes you all have to pay your time when you first start out with the job and um, so embrace that. Step 181, pick up office etiquette and norms right away. If you need to ask one of your coworkers, um, go to the employee handbook, whatever you need to do, you need to pick up on that. 182, the most important of all above type questions is who is actually in charge? Step 183, treat casual Friday as not so casual Fridays. So if it's a casual Friday, still dress professionally. Um, don't go in to work in your sweats just because it is casual Friday. Step 184, do not be that intern. You, when you take a job as an intern, um, that is a great way to build um, a reference um, and also it can lead into a full-time position. So step 185, do not tell the internet what you think of your job because it will get back to your employer. 186, don't lose touch after an internship. Step 187, ask for a raise. Step 180, let's back up. Ask for a raise. There's nothing wrong with asking a raise, but you need to back up what you have contributed um, to the company organization that, um, you work for and you need to make sure that their return of a raise to you which is their investment would pay off for them and you so it would be a win-win situation. Step 188, put together a work wardrobe. Step 189, get some really nice expensive black heels or if you're a guy, um, get some really nice dress shoes. Step 190, don't hook up with anyone in your office, no matter how exciting the prospect. Step 191, live your life as though everyone in the office has plastic, featureless doll crotches. So just don't, don't get involved with work people um, in a romantic way. 
192, you did not come here to make friends. Okay, so you can definitely become friends with your um, employer, with your employees, um, but just because you work with them doesn't mean that you're gonna become best friends with them. So it's kind of a bonus if you get to be good friends with your work people. And ideally that would be great because you spend so much time with them. But don't just assume that you are going to go work somewhere. So you be 193, find a mentor. Step 194, develop a good meeting face. And step 95, keep your desk tidy. Um, step 196, distinguish in your mind business etiquette from social etiquette. There is a difference. Step 197, don't verbally undermine yourself. Step 198, G-chat if you must, but remember your bosses can legally read everything that you're saying. Step 199, you can only call in fake sick one day a year. Step 200, you can, when it is truly warranted, take a mental health day. Um, step 201, tell your box the broad outlines when you're going through something really tough. Okay, sorry, there was a typo. So tell your boss in a general manner if you're going through something really uh, tough. You don't have to get super personal about it. Um, but it's not bad to, you know, say, hey, listen, I'm going through something right now. You may see it affecting my work. I'm really trying to work through it, um, but I just want to let you know I'm struggling right now, and I'm trying to get my stuff together and move forward because we all have tough times, and most bosses will be very um, sympathetic to that. Step two, two, if you are coughing, sneezing, or otherwise obviously infectious, and cannot take the over-counter meds to remedy the situation, stay home. So relevant to today's times. Step 203, if you are sick, stay home and rest. Don't try to do the work from home thing. Step 204, don't be likable, be a co-worker. So be part of the team and do your part in the work. Step 205, accept that there is no such thing as a vacation. Step 206, and the reason I say that before I move on, is we are so electronically attached to each other that emails that maybe need to be addressed. Step 206, take yours anyway, meaning taking your vacation. Step 207, do not steal more than $3 worth of office supplies per quarter. Step 208, shut down office creepers. Step 209, if there is something shading going on, document everything. Step two. 10, remember that HR is not necessarily on your side, um, but I don't want to give HR a bad rap because I work in the HR field at Rin Lake College. And really HR is kind of the customer service in my mind to um, the employees when they need assistance. Mm -hmm. Step 211, when possible, conflict via email. Step 211. 12, let the angry email you compose marinate for a minute before you hit send. Remember, once you hit send, there is no going back. Step 158, keep your head down and cook. Step 159, let go of your pride, because let me tell you, sometimes letting go of your pride is the best thing you can do. Um, 160, figure out, oh, one, how did we get to the 100s? I thought we were in the 200s. But anyway, one, we might have got out of order. Um, figure out what you don't want instead of what you do want. 161, keep your chin up when the inevitable setbacks come. We're all going to have setbacks. And what you need to do is you need to keep your chin up and you need to learn from setbacks. 162, know that there are a lot of paths to happiness. So, I think this is a really critical um, thing to talk about. Um, you're here and here's happiness. And things here in the happiness can change where maybe right here isn't what's keeping, what is really what you want. It can change six months from now, it can change six years from now. So be flexible with that. Accept the idea of networking. 164, ask for a business card when the conversation is widening to a close. 
Step 165, follow up with people you meet. 166, ask those people out for coffee and get to know them. 160, and know their goals. Uh, 167, go on informational interviews near and far. Step 168, make sure your social media presence doesn't raise more questions than answers. So when you're applying for a job, there are times when employers will go out to your social media to see what your demeanor is and um, just make sure that you would fit in the culture of their company. Um, 169, customize your resume. 170, proofread your resume. Step 171, you can and should send a follow-up email after you send in your application unless it's specifically forbidden. 172, if you are called for an interview on the moon, figure out a way to get there. Um, 173, do not bring anyone, not even your mom, your dad, your boyfriend, your cat, step cousins, frenemy, anyone with you to a job interview. Show up and look and sound smart. Okay. So I must have had a page get uh, intertwined because we are already to step 213. So bear with me. Um, if someone dislikes you right off the bat, then do your best to either nip it in the bud or avoid them. Step 114, assess whether the work foe is actually an enemy or just a difficult person. Step 215, stand up for yourself when someone is constantly dumping stuff on you that is not your responsibility. Step 216, if the person giving you a headache is above you, then it's time to kiss a little ass. Step 217, at a certain point, do your best to disengage. Step 218, discern between do pain and abuse in the work uh, place. 219, realize that there is a difference between toxic coworkers and toxic workplace. Step 220, if you work in a toxic environment, find a new job that is not healthy for you mentally. And when you're not healthy mentally, it will come across and hurt you physically. Step 221, wait at least a year to move on unless there's really, really a compelling reason to leave the job. Step 222, be quiet when you start looking for a new job. You don't wanna announce it and it to get back to your coworkers. Um, 223, let people in your network know that you are looking because they can help. Uh, step 224, write a resignation letter and a letter that is a nice one. Step 225, if you have an exit interview, don't per burn the place to the ground, but you can be tactfully honest. Step 226, help out someone in your professional network. Step 227 will kick us off to the chapter of money. Uh, money seems to be um, the biggest issue with adulting. Um, step 227, so if you are going to be a teacher, um, you know, they make good money, but starting out, it's a little tight. Um, so don't go and buy, you know, a $400,000 house. Be re have reasonable expectations for what you're gonna make and what you're gonna be able to afford. Uh, step 228, ignore money issues, won't make them go away. In fact, the opposite will happen. Step 229, know exactly how much money you have coming in. Um, so look at your money, um, look at how much taxes are gonna come out, look at how much money you may invest in your 401k, um, look at how much money you have coming in to your checking account, not the big number after taxes and everything else is paid. 230, take a long and look at the things that you don't need to be spending money on. Step 231, uh, that is a repeat. So uh, step 232, check, stick to your budget, um, not because it's the right thing to do, but because it gets you an out. So if, you are going to buy something or one of your friends wants you to buy something, just say, I have a budget and it's not in my budget. Um, step 233, give yourself a per diem, how much money you can spend per day. Step 234, start writing everything down every time you spend money. Step 235, think of shopping like drinking. 
Step 236, develop your anti-shopping mantra. Uh, step 237, if you don't have money to shop, do not window shop as though it's a real thing. Step 238, do not charge shopping sprees and other such fullness on your credit card because it will catch up with you. Step 239, if you have a problem with credit cards, freeze them. Step 240, pause before you buy something. Step 241, get what you came for. So when you go in a store, go get what you came for and don't linger and buy more stuff. Step 242, put away $10 per pay, pay period in savings. Step 243, be prepared for the $300 emergencies because they do appear. Step 240 of living expenses swirled away, or if you're a superstar, six months worth. Okay, so this is the last slide of uh, uh, steps. Step 245, one month's expense is better than none. Step 246, cut up credit cards, but don't close the account. Uh, step 247, do not ignore bills. Step 248, pay your bills on time, pay your bills on time. Oh, and don't forget, pay your bills on time. Um, that can really wreck your credit score. Step 249, know which bills can be late. Step 250, if you find yourself in a serious spine, call and ask the people you owe money for, for help. Uh, step 251, get comfortable with the idea of refinancing. Step 252, get good at shopping for clothes on the cheap. Or shop thoughtfully. Step 255, get familiar with happy hours and failing and, uh, uh, and side menus. Uh, step 256, pay your fair share cheerfully at the restaurants if you're, if you're um, splitting the bill. Step 257, if you're dying to go to a fancy schmancy restaurant that you can never afford, go to it, but just go for lunch instead of dinner. It's usually cheaper. Step 258, um, get good food and have cheap fun. Oh, get good at having cheap fun. Um, 259, don't borrow money from your friends. 260, discern things that are worth spending money on. Uh, 261, think in terms of how much things cost over their lifetime, but also with 262, remember the other side of lifetime cost rule. So these are all of the rules um, halfway through the book. Um, adulting, you can do it. Um, and it's broke down um, today with getting your mind right, explore domesticality, learn how to cook, fake it till you make it, get a job and be smart with money. Our next uh, class that we're going to be holding, which is next Wednesday at 2 o'clock, um, we're going to talk about maintenance, friends and neighbors, love, times for tough, and families. Um, so right now I'm just going to open it up if you have any questions or answers. I know I seem like I was rambling a lot, um, but that was a lot of steps to get through. Do you have any questions, Christian? No, I think I'm good. I think I've actually, I don't know if you're familiar, but I've read um, Rachel Hollis's books. I don't know if you've ever read any of those, but I have. I definitely think that a lot of these um, things that they say in here, and I just read her um, husband's book too. So, yeah, I'm Rachel really Hollis is, is a great um, person, um, and she writes a lot about life things and how to manage your emotions with certain situations yeah. and kind of makes you feel like you're not alone. You know, these Absolutely. are a lot of rules, um, but you don't have to conquer all those rules to yeah. be an adult. Like I said at the beginning, you know, ba baby steps, you know. Absolutely. Um, and there's adult, huh? I said uh, absolutely. I totally agree. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of adults that are my age or older that can't conquer some of these things. But like you said, you know, when you, you get out in the world, um, it can be overwhelming because your whole life, somebody has been doing a lot of these tasks for you. So anyway, if you don't have any questions or answers, well, I thank you for attending the um, Ren Lake Warrior Workshop. And <gasps> sorry, I have to tell hi. <laughs> 
Can you see me? Can you see me? I don't know. Oh, yeah, Christian. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Long time no see. What'd you say? I said long time no see. Yeah, true that. True that. Yeah. How have you been? Pretty good, you know, living a dream, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I did call Ray. I don't know. Is this recording? I yeah, but it, they, they'll cut it oh, off. They'll so cut it off. It's okay. It's over. I thought I heard you. It's okay. I said, I thought I heard you in here. Okay. I I heard you heard you in here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. People can always, like, when I go through drive throughs people recognize my voice even, like, before. <laughs> they'll notice that it's me. Well, I'm, um, I'm glad they jumped on. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I need to get back into that routine, like, because I mean, like, I was, like, so involved in leadership things and things, and I just want to, like, get on that track again, because I think I, I, it makes me show up really well, you know. Yeah, well, you can put this on your resume that you s attended the Warrior Workshop on adulting. Okay. I could send you I'll a certificate. Have to order this book. What? I could send you a certificate <laughs> if you attend the next one that you completed it. Okay, I'll definitely check my calendar. I was trying to attend the one before that, but I had one of my clients have an issue opening up their um, gallery, so I had to deal with that. <laughs> so, oh, that's all right. You know, that's life. You know there that's is a life. lot. There is a lot of um, Zoom meetings that are Zoom conferences that are going on. Like yeah. professionals, like for, probably professional photographers are offering. Zoom I know. And I feel like this is like a perfect time for me to take advantage of that. So perfect time for me yeah. too. I know like I just attended, I don't know if you know, um, yeah. that Rachel Hollis, she just had a um, conference and I attended that one. So, but I think she is well, really that's good. Awesome. Great, great yeah. mentor for me for sure. And I did yeah. call, um, yeah, Ren Lake Security the other day and they said that they wouldn't let me on. <laughs> But, you know, I'm just going to reschedule it. And I made it work yeah. for, like, the other part. So, but yeah. I'm trying to get, like, even though I think it is, like, illegal right now, I am trying to get, like, all those photo shoots in now, but I do have time. So. Right. Oh, I, I totally get it. So, there's probably <laughs> some other, there's probably some other Zoom <laughs> stuff out there for leadership, too. Zoom opportunities for leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I know uh, Brene Brown. You know who that is? Do you know who Bre uh, Brene Brown is? I'm, I'm sure that you do. The what one that? that talks about, you, have, you probably know Brene Brown, right? She just had one. Uh-huh. So did you sit on that? I didn't, but I like RSVP for it, and they um, give you access to um, it on demand. So, well, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, part of adulting is uh, going out there and putting yourself out there and having new experiences. And this is absolutely. You, are you taking any summer classes? Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm going to change it because um, since I'm, I still work for the newspaper, it's going to be like, due to the coronavirus, it's going to be like less. So I figured like, I'm going to take more over <laughs> the summer. Yeah. So and I'm taking this servant leadership class now. Um, oh, awesome. It's like two That's weeks. That's great. So. Right. I mean, I think it's well, a good class. Um, so well, far. Good. Well, you know, you know me, so you can always reach out to me anytime you need anything. Okay, well, sounds good. Thank you. And I did um, send my um, email in the chat, too. So if you okay, want to send that, great. that PowerPoint over. All right. Well, see? I will definitely check that out, and I will send it to you. I'll make some edits I found that I have um, a few typos. So I'll make those before I send them to you. Okay? All right. Well, sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care, buddy. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. I need to brush my teeth. Do you have any new toothbrushes?